this segment of our course on gearboxes, we will cover the reassembly of the parallel shaft single reduction gearbox, which was disassembled during the last segment. The first step in the reassembly is to replace any internal oil piping spray tubes and so forth that may have been removed during the disassembly. If for any reason the spray tube requires removal, be sure to reinstall the tube properly oriented. Remember that these nozzles direct the lubricating oil into the gear teeth as designed by the manufacturer. In this gearbox, oil is directed into the teeth of the gears as they mesh. However, in other designs, you may find the spray tubes directing oil into the teeth as they disengage. Now check the bearing contact of the four sleeve bearings with their respective shaft journals, as has been detailed in Module 4.18. Having satisfied yourself in this respect, install the bottom halves of the low-speed gear shaft bearings in their housing fits in the lower half of the gear case. And lock the low-speed bearings in the lower half of the case with the locking pins. Rig the gear wheel and shaft and lower the unit, properly oriented, into its bearings. Exercise care is not to damage the bearings in this movement. Now push the gear wheel in one direction or the other until the thrust runner on the wheel bears on the shoulder of the thrust bearing. Then with a set of feeler gauges, measure the clearance between the thrust face of the opposite bearing and that of the thrust runner on the gear wheel, as this workman is doing here. This measurement here is the gear float within its bearings and should not exceed that allowed by the manufacturer's specifications. Now using half of this clearance as a gauge, center the gear wheel within its bearings. Now seat the lower halves of the pinion shaft bearings in their respective housing fits in the lower half of the gear case. Now, meshing the matched mark teeth of the pinion with those of the gear wheel, lower the pinion into its bearings. With both the gear wheel and the pinion meshed and resting in their bearings, recheck the teeth match marks. Now, in accordance with your previous instructions on the installation of sleeve bearings, Module 4.18, the following must be checked. The bearing to journal clearance. The bearing shell to the case housing fit, if warranted. And the bearing alignment with the shaft. Having satisfied yourself with the bearing installation, we are ready to install the top half of the case. Apply sealant to the case joints, as this workman is doing here. And then lower the top half of the case into position over the lower half of the case. Insert the dowel pins into their mating holes in the top half of the case. Aligning the dowels with the alignment holes in the bottom half of the case. And lower the cover until it is seated. Secure the alignment of the case halves by tapping the dowel pins into place. Now, bolt up the assembly, tightening the bolts uniformly using the crossover method. During the bolting up of the assembly, it is wise to rotate the shafts from time to time to ensure that no binding is occurring during the tightening process. Before completing the reassembly, there are a couple of checks that we must make that can only be done through the inspection plate that the workman, shown here, is removing. The checks we want to make are, one, to ensure that the two shafts are parallel, and two, that the clearance between the engaging teeth of the two gears is within the allowance specified by the manufacturer. To check the parallelism of the two shafts, we inspect the contact pattern that the teeth of the two gears make when one of the gears is coated with a die and the reduction gear is rotated. To do this, remove any oil on the gear and apply a light, even coat of Prussian blue, or its equivalent, 
to three teeth across their entire width of the pinion gear. Now with one man restraining the rotation of the reduction gear, rotate the pinion in its operating direction three or four revolutions. Now inspect the tooth contact pattern on the gear wheel. If the Prussian blue has been evenly transferred and distributed to the teeth of the gear wheel across the width of the gear, then the gear shafts are true and parallel. If such a pattern does not transfer, the shafts are not parallel, and the problem lies in the machining of the component parts. There is no adjustment on this gearbox. Upon completing this check, remove the bluing agent from the gear to prevent contamination of the oil. The next check we want to make is to determine the tooth clearance, or as it is sometimes referred to, backlash. In short, you must check the fit between the two gears to determine whether or not the fit is too tight or too loose. If the two gears are fit too loosely, there will be excessive pressure on the outer ends of the teeth. The result is that the gears will chew each other up in a relatively short period of time. On the other hand, you must allow some space for the gears for expansion when they heat up. If there is no room for expansion, they will push against each other, creating excessive friction and heat. For these reasons, it is extremely important that just the right amount of backlash be allowed between the gears. To make this check, lock the shaft of the gear wheel, or otherwise ensure yourself that this shaft does not turn during this check. Now, mount a dial indicator on a convenient part of the gearbox with the foot of the indicator engaging a tooth on the pinion gear in such a manner as to indicate rotation of the pinion gear. Rotate the pinion gear to remove any slack in the engaged teeth of the gears. And zero the indicator. Now rotate the pinion gear in the opposite direction until it is stopped by the gear wheel. This rotational slack is the clearance in the teeth, and this backlash can be read directly on the dial indicator. This reading should be made at four locations on the gear wheel, 90 degrees apart, and compared with allowances specified by the manufacturer of the gear. As with parallel misalignment, there is no means of adjustment to correct excessive backlash, and the cause lies in improper machining of the component parts making up the gearbox. Having completed these checks, reassemble the oil pump. And with the oil pump bolted on its bracket, mount the pump on the reduction gear. Next, replace the pinion bearing end cover. Don't forget to replace the air baffles and connect up all external piping. Reinstall the oil strainer and secure it with its cover. Lubricate the gears generously with oil and bolt up the inspection cover. Upon tagging the gearbox for its return to service, your job is complete, except for cleaning up your work area and putting your tools away. We'll be back to talk about the right angle gearbox, but first we have some questions for you in exercise number four of your workbook.